Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to our channel. Hi. Uh, today we want to talk to you about how uh, we came overseas, how we came to uh, Asia in the first place. And so, Ashley is going to start us off. Around this time, November 18th or 16th, uh, 2011, that was the first time that I decided to move abroad. I graduated university in May 2011 and I was trying to decide what I should be doing and I, I think I was pre-law and then I decided I didn't want to do that. I want to travel and I want to get paid to do it. So eventually I came to the decision to move to South Korea because I had a friend that had taught there and he loved it. He said it was the best for teaching ESL, so I was like, I, I looked into a couple different countries and I also came to the same conclusion that the benefits in South Korea were very good for teaching ESL. So all I needed was a bachelor's degree. So in November of 2011, I made my way to Korea for the first time. Yeah, let's see, I moved to Korea in November of 2012. and. I had graduated from college and was working part-time jobs. Uh, wasn't too happy about it. Right, and so you went to college a little bit later in life. Yeah, yeah. I went to college maybe like I started six years after I graduated from high school. Thirty when I graduated, and like I said, I, <clears throat> I wasn't enjoying uh, working uh, at coffee shops as much as I love coffee. Uh, and then I came to South Korea. I actually went on Dave's ESL Cafe, and we'll post a link down below. Went on Dave's ESL Cafe and sent my resume, or posted my resume onto that site. And then the next day, within 24 hours, I received maybe like 10, maybe 12 uh, messages from recruiters in South Korea wanting to interview me for, for a job. Right, so in the next video, we'll talk more about how to find a job if you're looking into moving overseas. Uh, but Dave's ESL Cafe is a great place to start looking. They have jobs all over, but of course, they put a big emphasis on Asia, especially in South Korea and China, because that's where the most amount of jobs are. Yeah, and my first job, uh, I got in Ansan. Uh, and that was the same city that Ashley was working in. It's where we met. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know if everybody knows that, but yeah, we, we met in South Korea. I mean, I guess that makes sense. If you're Canadian and I'm American, we probably met abroad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. we met in Nansen. So after I was at my first job for a little over a year, I decided I wanted to work at a public school. So my first job in South Korea was something called a hagwon and my hours were from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., um, which is, is super convenient. So I really enjoyed the hours and the job was low stress, but I really wanted to try my hand at public school, so I moved to Seoul and I lived there for about one year. We decided to move in together and then got a job at uh, the same place. We got a job at an after school. Uh, job and the hours were really good from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. and the classes would start at 1 p.m. and so uh, it was pretty good however for various reasons that I'm not going to go into uh, we had to leave our job. Uh, no we can go into it a little bit I mean we were unhappy with the job we were promised some things and those were not true, so if you ever get stuck in a contract, that's the only time out of the whole time that we've ever broken contract, um, and it was because the boss was very dishonest. And so we gave two months notice, we did everything above board, so it should be known that if you're unhappy in your job and it's not a good situation for you, then you can give your notice. Um, Just get a release letter. That's the most important part, especially with South Korea. In fact, the thing with China as well, it's very important. Yes, so because the your work sponsors your visa. Um, so after the after school program fiasco was behind us, we got a job done in Ulsan, 
not to be confu confu confused. Not to be confused with uh, Busan, which is another major city down south in the southern part of Korea. Yeah, we worked at uh, Hagwon. Uh, it's a kindergarten. So we worked from 10 a.m.? 10, 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. Uh, well, it was a kindergarten in the morning time, and then in the afternoon we taught elementary school kids. And we This is also a Hagwon, so yeah. it was like a after school. It's hard to uh, explain the differences if you don't know. So the different types, sorry, I'm interrupting you. It's okay. Did you want to explain the different types of jobs that uh, you could have? Sure. Well, Hagwons are like private academies, and so these that are... That makes it sound like it's a... No, it's not super fancy. These are schools that have, I mean, your class would be like a maximum. You have many, 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 many classes. We had 46 classes per week when we were in the Wilson. Um, but your class size is maybe eight students at the most and anywhere like from eight at maximum down to like one or two uh, in, in terms of like the least amount of people, least amount of students. So there are many, many classes. However, you don't really have to do much prep, if any prep at all for your classes. So, so that's good. Whereas, I mean, you work at public school, right? So. Yeah, so the difference the different types of schools that you can work in South Korea or anywhere really is the Hagwon, which is the after school program, which is like a business. It's owned by a person, you're there to make money, your class size is much smaller. There's public school, your class sizes are going to be bigger and you're working at an actual school. There's kindergartens, which is for basically it's the American version of a preschool. And there's also the after school programs. There's another one that we've never done, which is working at a university. Mm. Um, but that's not really... I've heard those are really good jobs, though. We've heard they're good, but they're not our specialty. So we wouldn't know. And so then after Korea, uh, we went back to the United States. And I was a substitute teacher for a while. We lived in Idaho, uh, in Boise, Idaho. And Ashley, you were a... What were you again? Because they're preschool teacher. Preschool teacher, yes. And so we weren't really enjoying our time there because we were... I mean, we were doing the exact same job that we had in Korea, but getting paid much less for it. Paying more for things like utilities and internet, and it just wasn't a good situation for us. So we decided to move to China. Yeah. Which is where we are right now. Our first, our first contract was at an international school, um, and we worked there for a year and a half. And now we're at a new school. Um, we did get our credentials as well uh, online while we were in Korea uh, from ABCTE, and we'll do a separate video on that. Um, but we work for yeah, we've been here for about two years now, and really enjoying it. And yeah, so I mean, that's our career trajectory up until this point. We don't really know where we're interested in going to next, but these next couple of videos will be focusing more on how to find jobs in South Korea or China, because that's what we know. Um, but I know the Middle East is also something that people might want to consider. Uh, if you like this video, then you know what to do. Go downstairs and hit the like button. and Downstairs. The bell button. Take and your computer, go downstairs. Comment. In fact, maybe we should ask a question for the comment, because we never seem to do that. So maybe we could get more, more engagement with the comment section. What kind okay. of questions should we ask? Uh, if you also live abroad just like us, then Feel free to let us know, or if you have any questions about moving abroad or what our life is like here, then definitely ask us because, yeah, it's officially seven years, minus the six months that I was in Idaho, but. Yeah, if you have any questions about, you know, teaching abroad, then, you know, I, I teach many girls, so. Ah, God, that was bad. <laughs> All right, we're done? Yeah. Okay, cool.